Hello, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the library QSort function for sorting your arrays in C programs. If you're writing a C program that requires to sort an array, then you just don't need to implement sorting algorithm in your program. You can use the library QSort function, which is implementation of QuickSort for the purpose of sorting. Let's go ahead and see that. Now, in order to use that library QSort function, what you need to do first is that you need to write a function that's going to tell the QSort how to compare two elements of your array. Because you may want to sort an integer array, or you may sometime want to sort a double array, or maybe you want to sort an array of structure objects. So uh, QSort is a general sorting algorithm, and that requires how to compare the elements of your array in order to sort it. Using this QSort, we can practically sort any type of array in our C program. We just need to supply that comparator function there with our program. That's going to be called by the QSort, and QSort is going to pass the addresses of two consecutive elements of our array that we intend to sort as void pointer to this comparator function. And the comparator function is going to compare these two consecutive elements, and it's going to return back the result to the QSort. And QSort is going to use the result for ordering the elements. So let's go ahead and see how we can write this comparator. I'll name it as compare2. The return type of this comparator function is going to be integer. I'll tell you about that soon. Now the name can be anything. You can name it as comparator or compare2, whatever you like. Now as I said, it's going to receive two parameters. Both are constant void pointers. Constant void pointer first and constant void pointer second. Okay, these are the addresses of two consecutive elements of our array. Now, since the QSort is a general sorting algorithm, it will send the addresses of two consecutive elements of the array as void pointer to this first and second. But we know that we are sorting an integer array. So we need to convert that void pointer to the appropriate integer pointer type. So I'll just use simple casting here. So integer pointer and we cast that first to integer pointer and that is saved there in integer pointer a and we are going to do that for the second as well okay so now we need to compare these elements pointed by a and b so if star a is greater than star b we need to actually send back a positive number any positive number will do so i'll just return back plus one so if a positive number is returned back by this compared to function to the QSort. QSort understands that the first one is greater than the second one. Else if uh, if star b is indeed greater than star a, then we need to return a negative number. In this case, the QSort understands that the second one is larger than the first one. Otherwise, if both of them are just exactly equal, we need to send back zero. So that's how we can write the compared to function. So the return type is always integer either a positive number, negative number, or zero, according to whether the first one is greater than, less than, or equal exactly. So here we need to call the QSort function. And for calling the QSort function, you need to pass these parameters. The first one is the base address of the array. I already have mentioned this here. Okay, this is the prototype of the QSort function, as you can see at line number six. The first one is the base address to the array, and here, for our case, it's x, the name of the array. The second one is the total number of elements in the array, and that is num, that is initialized with 10, that's the number of elements in our array. Third one is size of each element that the array contains, so it's going to be size of integer. And then finally, the last parameter is going to be the address of the function, the comparator function that we just wrote there. Now the address of the function is always kept in the name of the function. That's the function pointer. Okay, so you need to supply the name of the function that the QSort is going to use for comparing the elements. So for our case, it's going to be compare2. That's all, that's the call to the QSort function and the array is going to be sorted. Okay, so let's go ahead and just print the content of this array using a for loop after the sorting. So i equals zero, i less than num, that's the total number of elements, plus plus i. And then I'm going to print the content here, percent 4D and XI. Let's go ahead and run this program. Instead of percent 4D, let's make it percent 6D, just to make it nicer. Okay, build, build and run. And here you go. 
see that the array is sorted by Q sort using the compared to function that we supplied to the Q sort. Now, if you want to sort it in the descending order, then you just need to return back negative number if the first one is greater than second one and a positive number when the second one is larger than the first one. Just do the reverse thing. Okay. Now, if both of them are exactly equal, always you need to return back zero. Now, this time, this compare to function is uh, going to be used by the Q sort and Q sort is going to do the uh, descending order sorting. Let's go ahead and see. You can see that this time it is descending order sorting. Okay, that's it. That is how we can use the Q sort function for sorting our arrays. We just need to supply the compare to method to the Q sort so that Q sort gets to know how to compare to consecutive elements in our array and it can order the array. Thank you for watching this.